is anybody tired of fighting the same old battle that you used to fight? Anybody tired of that? All right. Then I know I'm, I'm in the right place tonight. Has anybody had to fight an enemy you thought you had already killed and they showed back up again because you didn't, you didn't bury them deep enough or you didn't get it behind you. So that's the worst day of my life when I have to fight an enemy that I thought was already gone or when God has to teach me a lesson I thought I had already learned is anybody else there? I mean, am I just slow or is, has anybody else had to deal with that where it's like, God, you have already taught me this lesson. How in the world am I back here again fighting the same enemy and, and, and dealing with the same thing I've already thought I won? So that's what this whole lesson is about. If you don't drive them out, they come back. That's the real lesson here. If you don't drive them out, if you allow them, if you tolerate them, if you toy around with them, if you do not drive them out, they show back up again. The thing that defeated Israel ultimately and became their destruction was all of these nations that they did not wipe out invaded them, intermarried with them, and they started serving their gods. And it ultimately became the destruction of Israel that they served these false gods. So just like Israel, we are still today, and I think you're going to be amazed when we identify these, that we're still fighting them today. These are the same enemies we are still fighting today. It, it's the old story of Israel, but it's the now. It's the, it's the story of you and me right now trying to live a victorious life, and these same enemies are trying to keep us from our promised land and keep us from our victory. All right, so let's, let's go in and begin in Joshua chapter 3. Go ahead and stay in 24 because I just want to read this because this was the instruction. And then we're going to go to the place where it was actually done. So let's start in Joshua chapter 3. Joshua said, By this you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Heatites, the Heavites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. All right, so these are the seven nations. Notice the language here. You don't have to fight these. God's going to drive them out. But you can't let them back in. So the problem was not getting rid of them. The problem was intermarrying with them. The problem was not that God can't deliver me, but if I keep going back to the old hangout where I got caught up in the first time, I'm going to get it again. If God can deliver me, but if I don't change some of my friends, I'm going to fall right back into the same uh, circumstances I was in before. God will deliver me. God will set me free, but if I don't but if I pick back up my old attitudes, if I pick back up my old habits, then I'm going to end up fighting an enemy that God ran out and I let back in because my guard was down. So that's why this first verse is important. Because God can drive them out. How many of you have ever been delivered that should be just about everybody. We've been delivered. How many of you, after being delivered, had another battle with the thing you got delivered from? I, I'm glad that everybody doesn't have to raise their hands because that's important. At some point in time, we have to learn how to kill the enemy, cut the head off of Goliath and dance on the grave. You need, to, you need to be able to go back and say, oh no, you're not telling me that again. I know it's a lie. That's where I buried it. I'll show you the tombstone and the shovel where I buried you. I'm not going back there again. And, and that's where we have to get to with some of the temptations in our life Otherwise, if we let our guard down and our prayer life down or we start flirting around with these enemies, they creep back in and we're dealing with the same problem we've already conquered. And I wish that I could stand here and testify tonight and say, that's never happened to me. 
but I can't because it has happened to me and you don't even have to tell me I know it's happened to you. It is the warfare that we fight. So let's figure out what these enemies mean, who they are, and let's stop fighting old enemies. All right, so I'm gonna read a little bit. So let's go to Joshua chapter 24, and you gotta stay with me, and we're gonna read a little bit. There's a couple things I really wanna point out in this passage. All right, so let's see if he underlined those things that I wanted to underline. There we go. You know what, I, I, they're underlined in mine, so let me go, I'm gonna just read from mine. Joshua chapter 24, verse 11. Then you went over the Jordan and came to Jericho, and the men of Jericho fought against you, also the Amorites. Now, I want you to underline, if you believe in that, underline that we're an Amorite in your Bible, because you're going to see that God has switched the line up and put them first. They weren't first in the other list. Did you notice that? They were next to last. And now they have moved up to the top of the list. And you're going to see this repeat itself over and over and over. So they had to fight. And notice where they are at Jericho. How many of you know that was their first battle? So the first thing they had to kill was the Amorite. Now, you'll figure out what this is in a little bit. But I want everybody to say this phrase with me. The first enemy you have to slay is the Amorite. Now, guys, if you don't kill the Amorite... Everything else can creep into your life. Now, when you figure out who these Amorites are, you got to kill the Amorite first before you can win the other battles. And we'll get there in just a moment. All right. So let's keep reading. Verse 13. I have given you a land for which you did not labor, and cities you did not build and dwell in them. You eat of vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant. Is there anybody in the room that can say, that's my testimony? God has given me things that I did not deserve. I am living a good life. If God had have given me what I deserved, I wouldn't be here tonight. I wouldn't be in my right mind. I would be in the grave somewhere. But God's grace has kept me and bless me beyond my circumstances. Can anybody give that testimony tonight? I've given you land you did not labor, cities you did not build. Verse 15, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. This is God talking. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites. Notice he mentions that again. Now he's telling you the gods of the Amorites again. He keeps pulling this group out from all the other groups because if they're not killed first, they let everything else in. All right, so let's go there. He said, Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me, this is where we get that phrase from, from Joshua. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. How many of you believe that? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So the people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord is our God, and for the Lord is our God, is he who has brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went and among all the people through, through whom we passed. God just took us right through them. We passed through all these enemies and God brought us right on through. Verse 18, and the Lord drove out from before us all the people including the who? Wow, here they are again. What is it about this group? They keep showing up, including the Amorites who dwelt in the land. We will serve the Lord for he is our God. Thank you so much for supporting our ministry. If this has blessed you, please say a prayer for us. And if you would like to give, we have four ways that you can do that. You can give online at briancutshaw.com, or if you're a PayPal user, just PayPal us at Church Trainer. Or you can also give through the mail at P.O. Box 267, Georgetown, Tennessee, 37336. Or if you're a Venmo user, you can Venmo us also at Church Trainer. Thank you, and God bless you, and may the Lord multiply your seed. Now back to Hope in the Word. 
Now let's look again at the original text. I'm just going to show you a list in the original text and how they lined up. These are the seven enemies that they had to conquer. The Canaanites, the Heatites, the Heavites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, the Amorites. Okay, so this is the ones he said had to be conquered. So what we're going to do, one, two, three, four, five, six, there's one more. That one didn't make the cut, but he's in there. It's the Jebusites. All right, so the Jebusites are in there as well. So, um, so in this list, I want you to notice that the Lord said, these are your seven enemies. Now, before we go further with this, how many know there were more tribes than this in the promised land? I mean, there's a lot of them that he never mentioned there's a, lot of, there's a lot of other groups out there that he never mentioned, but he said, these seven you have to destroy. Now, you can see why. Look at the, look at the map. If you've ever been to Israel, you've noticed there is, the, there is the Sea of Galilee. There is the Dead Sea. You know where you are. Who's living there? These seven nations. The Heatites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, and all of these are living in that area, okay? So this is why they had to conquer that land and these particular seven nations. So let's get started. So who are these people, and why are we still fighting them today? The first one he mentions is the Canaanites. What is the Canaanite? The Canaanite, the word Canaanite comes from the Hebrew word that literally means traffic or trading, to be brought low by traffic or trading. It has to do with the love of money, all right? So money is not bad. God wants you to have money. You need money, and God will bless you with money. The Bible does not say money is the root of all evil. It does not say that. It says the love of money is the root of all evil, which means that when the love of money turns to greed and jealousy, that is the thing that causes a lot of people to stumble. Have you ever met someone in your lifetime who sold out? They gave up ministry for a higher price. They, they sold out for a higher paycheck. They, they got what they wanted, but they lost what they had. They, they had their eyes on more, and the more pulled them out of the kingdom. I've seen people, you know, just ask God to bless me, bless me, bless me, and then God will bless them, and they quit going to church. Oh, oh I haven't seen you all. Oh, man, I've got so much work. So I guess I need to start praying, God, just let their business fail, you know, take their business. I mean, God, if, if, they're, if they're serving the Canaanite God now, and they've quit going to church, and they've quit serving you, and they're serving a Canaanite God now, and they've chosen money over the house of God. They've, they, they, can't, they can't love you anymore because of money. Then God, by all means, take it away. Anybody want me to pray that prayer over you right now? God, just take it away. No, we don't want that prayer, right? So it's not money. It's the love of money. So that is why the Canaanite wars were, were fought. And now the, Socrates, which was, you know, a, a Greek philosopher, said that all wars are fought over money and power. I think that's true. He said, all wars are fought. If there is a war going on anywhere in the world today, it's over money or power. The Canaanite spirit is still alive. How many of you know the Canaanite spirit will divide a family? Just ask people dealing with a will. A ask them dealing with a will. Who gets what? The Canaanite spirit will divide a family. The Canaanite spirit will divide friends if somebody gets a better paying job. The spirit of jealousy comes in. Have you ever seen that happen? So the Canaanite spirit is this spirit of greed, this love of money that creates a spirit of greed. Now let's go to the next one. The next one is the Heatite spirit. The Heatite spirit is the god of fear. So the word Heatite literally comes from a, just comes from a Greek word that means terror, all right? So this word means terror. And so uh, if, if you serve a god of fear, it's everybody's gonna be afraid of something, but you cannot have a spirit of fear. God did not give you a spirit of fear, but of what? Power, love, and a sound mind. And when you get a spirit of fear, you get entrapped 
and a mental prison that holds you captive with your fears. And if you've ever been in that mental prison, you know it's a place of torment. When you get afraid of everything and you live in this state of constant anxiety that you can't get rid of because you're afraid. There are people that are afraid to go outside of their own house. There are people, as a matter of fact, I went to, I went to get my hair cut one time and the lady said, um, well, I, I almost had to move you because there's a lady that is afraid of, of going out in the daylight he said that she lives, she, she only stays up at night, she sleeps in the daytime, and I have to give her my first appointment because she's afraid of life. And the only time she'll stay awake is at night watching TV or go, she shops online, never goes out of her house. She comes here, I'm thinking, why is she even getting her hair cut? I mean, that was my thought. It's like, she don't see anybody anyway. My, that was my thought. I never said that out loud, but I was thinking, it's like, well, why are you even bothering with a hairdo if, you, if you're not even going anywhere? But they said it's because she will not leave her house. She, she wants to get here at 7.30 in the morning, get her hair cut and go back home immediately. And then that's when she she locks herself in and sleeps during the daytime. So fear is this mental prison. Now, let me tell you who, where we see the Heatite spirit in our, in our land. The government knows that if people are afraid, they can control them. Anybody ever heard of COVID-19? The coronavirus, anybody ever heard of that? And what were we fed constantly? Fear, 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 lockdown, shut down, terrified over flu virus. And I'm not saying it wasn't deadly because it was deadly. There was a lot of people, and I don't want to make fun of that. I'm not talking about the people who died. I'm talking about the way we were manipulated and told we were, this is going to happen if you don't do this and if you don't do that. And we were getting this constant feeding of fear because fear gives people control. If you can make someone afraid of you, you can control that person. There's people that live that way, unfortunately. Uh, the news creates fear. News addicts are the most anxious people in the entire world. They're afraid of everything. Literally, they live in a state of fear. Listen, if you're going to get addicted to something, get addicted to Jesus. Get addicted to worship. Get addicted to your Bible. Get addicted to Christian. T I mean, do something, but don't get addicted to the news. How many of you know that the news is a manipulated, scripted narrative that is based upon whoever is paying for that station? All you got to do is flip the station. Fox is going to tell you something from different from CNN. They're all picking on different people based upon who's, got, who, who's lining their pockets. So understand this. Fear is a spirit of control, and that's what happens with the, with the Heatite spirit. It is using fear to control the people around you in your life. And so fear stops you. It cripples you. It, it makes you settle. It hurts you. It causes you to doubt yourself and God and everybody and not trust anyone because fear is your enemy. Can I say, can I tell you something that kind of goes along with this? I want to, I want I had to learn this the hard way. So I'm, I'm giving you a little bit of a, a testimony that I overcame. Like guys, I'm talking like 40 years ago. So, so it's not anything new. So you don't have to worry about me. But can I tell you something else that's not your friend? Self-pity is not your friend. Self-pity will destroy you if you let it in your life. You start feeling sorry for yourself, it will literally destroy your mind. It is a part of this Heatite spirit that we fight. This program is brought to you by the partners of Brian Cutshaw and Church Trainer Ministries. Please help us pray that the Lord will continue to send us more partners so we can expand His kingdom around the world.